The idea of a data game is simple. You play a computer game. The data you generate by playing flows into the surrounding data analysis environment. You analyze the data looking for patterns and building a model of what is going on. Insight from data analysis helps you improve your strategy. You play the game some more to find out if your improved strategy improves your score. Repeat until you're ready for the next level of the game. Let's see how that plays out with a particular game called Proximity. In this game, your score depends on how close you get the white ball to the center of the gold target area. You shoot by drawing back on the ball to aim it toward the target. Release and the ball moves. A game consists of six shots. Let's fast forward a bit. You can do reasonably well by eyeballing, but to get really good scores you need to work with some data. Here is a table that shows data from some individual shots. And here's a graph that shows that the distance a ball travels depends on how hard you push it. If you put a line on the graph and adjust it to move through the points, you have a mathematical model of the game you can use to improve your score. Measure the distance you want the ball to travel and solve the equation for how hard to push it. Perhaps you've noticed a way to improve your strategy even further. Once you've mastered one level of the game, you move on to harder levels. So, how do you get this to work in a classroom? To figure that out, we've been field testing data games activities with 14 middle and high school math teachers in the San Francisco Bay Area. In 2012, we plan to field test middle school probability and data analysis activities in Massachusetts. Each teacher is using four or more activities in their classrooms this year. We're working together to figure out the best ways to help students use these games. The teachers are integrating these activities into regular classroom sessions. The games enhance the mathematics topics they're teaching anyway. For example, an activity based on proximity fits well in a unit on proportional relationships. A typical data games lesson has several stages. First, students get some experience and intuition about the game simply by playing. Next, they write reflections to a few questions on paper or in an online form that the teacher can see before proceeding to the next phase. Teachers see these student responses and use them to guide the discussion and plan the next part of the lesson. Then students might work in pairs at computers playing the game, analyzing data and refining their strategies. Some teachers have students record their progress and insights in an online worksheet. There might be a leaderboard of high scores. A symposium might have students present their strategies to the class. Some teachers reserve the last five to 10 minutes of a class for a tournament, typically using a level of the game that students have not yet played. If teachers can look at the online forms during class, they can adjust the lesson on the fly to reflect what students are learning or what they particularly need. Because the games are online, most teachers can even assign homework, for example, to have students play the game at a certain level and document the data analysis they use to improve their strategies. The assignment might also challenge them to beat a particular score. Imagine a homework assignment to play a computer game. We're improving the games and activities based on these field tests. The games are now more accessible, easier to understand and to play, but also more demanding so that to do well, you really need to understand the data and use the math. Our early conclusion from this field test is that data games are an engaging way to deliver math content 
and conduct assessment with help from technology.